Hello folks, I found this box that I labeled art, and I think these are all pens that I had decided would be good for the artist. And one of the reasons that they're in here is that a lot of the artists I know, and I will include myself in that group are starving artists. As you saw on an earlier visual video, I made them starving by making them skinnier here. So they're really starving artists. And there we go. And um, I know that money is a concern for, for many people, including artists. Um, and art, art supplies are very expensive. You go to an art supply store and you could fill up a shopping cart that you would borrow from the grocery store and just a couple of aisles you could fill it up with tens of thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars worth of oil paint. So I know that you're willing to spend money on some things, you artists out there, you and why not spend it on a pen? So, but I try to, I, I think of myself and how poor I am. And I, I, what I do is I find nice nibs like this one, nice flexible rubbery nib, and I might place it into a barrel. The holder is not very pretty. It's mis it had a gold band right there, which is in the fullness of time has fallen off and no longer exists. And there's a slight warping right here that a pen collector would hate and dismiss this pen outright because of that. But from here to there, generally speaking, artists don't care what it looks like. So I have put nice nibs in plain or slightly dinged up barrels so that this nib can get into the hands of a starving artist so they can go out and do beautiful drawings. So I'm just uh, trying to get over a cold, so sorry about that sniffle. So this is a really nice rubbery nib. This would be great for any sketcher, any urban sketcher. Um, it has a lot of life in it, and that'll be perfect for someone. Let's see what other one is in this box. This is a Waterman 52, and it, as you can see, it had it, the clip that it would have had riveted right there is missing, so I have this slip clip on it so you can put it in your pocket. It's a Waterman number two nib. And let's see what this one writes like. Wow, this is a beautiful nib. Now, this nib in a barrel that had a cap with the correct clip on it would be maybe a hundred dollars or you know somewhere 75 to 100 let's say but this nib is really really yummy and I charge more for nibs I'm just telling you that right this very second a nib that has the really yummy quality like this pen I, I put a premium on the nibs but because of that missing the clip, this pen will be less <coughs> gosh, sorry, so sorry, than if it had one. Here's another pen. It's a big initial on the side. <coughs> Done in some sort of interesting way. Um, and it, because of that 
those initials, some people are not interested in it. And um, I'm not interested in it that much because it's a little too crudely done for my taste. It looks like someone took a wood burner or something and cut into it. It's neat, but I don't need this pen in my collection. And it has a nice, fine, semi-flexible nib. And because of this, quote, flaw, a pen collector might not want this, but an artist would. Or perhaps a calligrapher. This is a nice nib for calligraphy, some kinds of pointed pen calligraphy, but it's more... Well, I think a, a calligrapher or an artist would find this pen nice. Let's see what this one is. <clears throat> this is a... I don't know what who made it. J. Harris, maybe, pen. Um, Harris, yeah. Harris Pen Company. Off-brand pen company. This nib is probably more modern. It's a warranted nib, probably from the 30s, maybe the 40s. Again, a nice rubbery nib. And I've put it in a pen that is maybe 10 years older than the nib, maybe 15 or 20 years older even. And it works perfectly fine. The clip is a little tiny bit loose. I might be able to tighten that up. But it, it's otherwise it's a perfectly nice pen. I could polish that up, make it shiny, charge a couple extra bucks for it, um, or leave it grungy like it is. Uh, I'll probably make it look pretty and not charge a couple of extra bucks for it. But, but it has a really, really good nib. So this belongs in the art department. Uh, what is this one? This is a Yankee pen. Again, the nib is more modern. And a two is a nice springy nib. A calligrapher would like this pen. An artist would like this pen. I can go the wrong way with it, and it's still smooth. Again, this is a more modern gold nib that I put in this pen that was probably from the 20s. This one is a Webster pen. These pieces of tape and stuff that I put on it, I'm, I'll remove. This is for me to remind myself what kind of nib it has. The white was fine in my, in my system. White meant fine nib. So it's pretty fine, but it also has some flexibility to it. And I might send this to a <coughs> guy on YouTube that does tutorials on how to draw. And this pen, I think, he loves micron nibbed um, felt tip pens. And he, but he cross hatches, and he uses the the felt tip doesn't have much of a flexibility. Yes, you can press down hard and you can make it get a thicker line, but you end up ruining the tip. Where this pen has a fine nib, and you press down and it gets thicker and it goes right back to being fine again. It doesn't deform the nib. So I think he might like this pen. Um, it's This is a little tiny bit loose in here, so what I will do is take a little tiny piece of paper, a little piece of tape, and put it in there just to add a little tiny bit more friction. Um, sometimes plastics on pens expand or contract over time and things that used to fit very snugly no longer fit. And that's a way that we pen repairmen can repair a pen. Now some people might figure out other ways to do it. Um, but this is a way that, I mean, yes, I could look through all of my parts and find a section that's tighter, but that requires me to 
look through all my parts and I've got thousands of parts and I'm not I don't have the time to do that whereas I can take right now a piece of <coughs> here's a sticky label and it doesn't need much maybe just this little tiny piece right there oh aha well I need to get my pliers out to put that back on and I just take a little tiny piece right there and just that extra added thickness of paper will probably hold this snugly huh, it does but um, I need, now I need to get my pliers out and replace the, the uh, pressure burr this little thing slides in to the lever. Anyway, I'll fix that, get that going. But this might be the pen that I'll send to this guy named Alfonso. Alfonso Dunn. Look at his Alfonso, A L P H O N Z O Dunn. Look at his. Uh, videos. He's very generous with his knowledge and his time and his talent. And I think I may send him this pen uh, as a thank you for the services he gives to inspiration and knowledge that he gives to artists around the world. And as my thank you, uh, I'll, I'll give him this pen. And if he wants to plug my videos and my pens. He's welcome to do it if he doesn't. He doesn't have to. If he doesn't like the pen, I hope he'd send it back, but um, I think I think you'll really enjoy it because it does everything that he seems to like to do with his the pens he uses, but it does a little bit more on top of that. So this might go to Alfonso. Put that right there. Here's another pen that a, a collector doesn't care about because there's a... I don't know if this is mismatched or if this was an attempt at some sort of beautification, but they did belong together at one point. They have the same sort of trim on it. Sometimes barrels and caps change color based on um, oh, the sulfur emitted from the rubber sack, but usually they get darker. Um, but this, you know, and I have some pens where they are two-toned, like saddle shoes, uh, because of that was the design. So this might be two different pens put together, but they're from the same company and they fit together. And uh, a two. You know, as it might be a little bit fugly, we'll say, for the pen collector, but for the artist or the calligrapher, they don't care. I mean, many of them don't care. Okay, what else do we have here? We've got this one. This is another Harris pen. And I've again, found this actually might be a nib that's almost as old as the pen is, and they get a nice rubbery nib. So all of these pens, I guess, that I put in the box that said art, all of them actually are good for artists. This is a steel nib, I think. Might be gold. Where's my, where's my loop? Fourteen karat gold. Yeah, it's a gold nib. The nib looks like it had been dropped on its little nose at one point in its life. So it's it's it has a little bend at the end of the tip, and that's always a very difficult thing to fix. So, but it writes perfectly fine. So again, I may not 
risk damaging it more by trying to fix it. So this is something I probably, not all of these pens I would send across the country to someone that I've never met, but this is something that I could, you know, show someone face to face and say, you know, there's this little ding that it has. I don't think it damages the way that it writes, but I just want you to be aware that that's there. I don't want some pen collector to say that I was screwing you by sending, selling you a pen that was damaged. Now this pen is a Morrison pen, and this one, an artist or a calligrapher or, or drawer can certainly buy it from me, but it's almost in perfect shape. Uh, it's missing a gold band here, so maybe, but a, a Morris, Morrison collector might like this better than an artist, so that maybe will go in a different box. Finally, the more writer. Uh, this is a more pen, and it looks like it has a slightly stub nib, which it does. So this one, I think I will aim toward the calligrapher, uh, who likes doing lettering that requires a nib like this. Yes, an artist could draw with it, but I'm going to save this one for a calligrapher if I don't keep it myself. There's a slight um, upturn to the back of the barrel here, so the cap like, doesn't fit straight on like that. It sort of sticks up, and a pen collector who collects more pens would say, gee, I don't want that because of that problem. And I'll say, okay, fine. And, but this is going to make a calligrapher very happy. And I might just keep it because I'm learning to like this kind of lettering more these days. Um, more nibs. This company, their nibs were often a little bit flimsy. There, if I were to take this nib out, there might be a crack in the back here. That tends to be, you know, every third more pen that I tend to see. Well, maybe that's too many. Every fifth more pen. One of five has a little, it might have a little crack in the back. Um, where it is shoved into the pen. I don't know why they do, but they do. And, well, I'll tell you why. Because the pens, they, they use a thinner gold. Uh, they, they make them thin, which sometimes cracks. So, anyway. Um, it's... <coughs> It's a, it's a nice looking pen if you ignored that little thing that it has. It's, it's fluted, it has little sides to it, it has this lovely greenish color, fancy gold band. It's called the Moore Writer. This was sold probably to students. Um, but it has a really nice stub nib. So this is going to go in the calligrapher. This will go with the calligrapher kit. This will go to the collector kit group. And these are going to go to the artists. So, um, and I'll end up probably keeping this one. I just will, just because it's mine and I'll just keep it. It's really a nice yummy nib. No, I'll, I'll probably sell it. I'll, I've got, I'll, I'll enjoy using it for a couple of months and then I'll, I've got a couple of calligraphers that love this kind of nib, so. And they use it all the time. They, they write with that kind of nib all the time and I just do it occasionally. And I've got other pens that I can do this kind of writing with. And, but this is gonna make, this is gonna make someone very happy.
other than me. So what I'll do with these pens is try to figure out what they're going to cost and uh, put up, post little pictures on my comment section to this video and hopefully uh, some of these pens will end up in your hands. And for the most part, for the most part, the I'm selling you a nib that happens to be in a barrel that's free. So when you get the pen and you say, it's missing a band, I said, yeah, I know. I'm not charging you for that. I'm charging you for the nib. You can pull the nib out and put it any, anywhere you like, but um, so for the most part, I mean, there's other, there's exceptions. This is nice and this will clean up very pretty. And you know, this part, yes, it is going to, it is going to, yes, I do charge for the barrel, but I'm not charging hundreds of dollars for them because, you know, this pen right now, if this were in a black pen, it would be X dollars because it's in this very beautiful marbleized thing and all of the parts are there and it's not warped or chewed on or there's no badly engraved name this is going to add you know another 50 percent or more sometimes to the value of the pen because it's pretty um, and pretty uh, costs more than ugly uh, but Again, for the most part, artists, in all of the years, I've been selling pens for 30 years, and, you know, I will show a pen to an artist, and they might, for a second, look at a prettier pen, and I'll say, okay, well, that's going to be $20 more, or whatever the number was, and they'll, they'll say, okay, fine, I'll save the 20 bucks and they're very happy with a pen that has a slip-on clip rather than the original so there we go call me crazy call them crazy um, things like that dent that would make a pen collector unhappy but you know an artist sometimes you know, they're, they're happy with the dent because it's pre-dented. Now they don't have to be so precious about the pen. They can, not that I recommend it, but they could drop it on the floor and if it gets another dent in it because of their carelessness, um, they're not going to get all depressed. They'll just have another dent. Already has one. Let's put another one on it. So, yes, I'm making huge generalizations about everyone. Look at this one. Lots of this, a dog might have. Yes, I think maybe a dog grabbed this. Forensic analysis show that these are dog bites rather than human human teeth. A little too pointed. This again, this cap would make everyone unhappy except for me. I think it's kind of fun. And this is on the wrong pen. This is supposed to have a screw cap, but it came this way uh, to me, and I'm just keeping it this way because it does work, and I'm not selling this to anyone. I'm just using it myself because it has this one of these really neat nibs that I'm learning to like. So there you go. Hopefully one of these pens will end up in your hands. This one is going to go to Alfonso. Alfonso, I hope you like it. Um, I think you will. I predict you will. And thank you for your generosity to me and to all of these artists out there. You're very generous with your time. and So you guys look him up. Alfonso. I had a Dunn pen, I would give you one of those, but they, they don't fill very well. They have a very 
It's a very good quality pen, but I don't know how to make them work. The Dunn Pen Company. So, this is a Webster pen. And this, the, the flaw with this one is this clip might be a little bit sprung. It's a little looser than most of them are, so. Um, but it seems to be fine. Anyway, and this is a little loose, but I'll fix that. This is for Alfonso, but these may be for you guys, or gals, whatever you are. And this is going to be for me, and then for a calligrapher. This is going to be for a collector, I think. But these might be yours. Thank you.